You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And this is episode 25. 26. 26. You were close. Yeah. I but get, who's counting? Well, it, it, obviously us because it's a you know, numbered, numbered thing. thing. Yeah, exactly. No, we're not counting well, though. At the very no, least. no. <laughs> All um, right. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do most of the talking this week. Yeah, it's my turn. Because <clears throat> now you got the you got the sickness. Yep. I'm going to blame you. Uh, I guess you can. Like I said, I got I got what you had like a month ago. It's so true. It's a very delayed germs, but whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Yep. So they uh before the show they did that thing where they cut from the USA Network before Raw. Yeah, before Raw. I'm sorry. <sighs> they um they cut to like from what's airing on USA and they show the crowd and whatever, and they say John Cena is gonna open up Raw. Raw comes on, and you just have Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley fighting. Yep. Like, you lied to me. That's what they do. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they they have them fighting up on the stage and everything. The fight gets broken up, and then John Cena comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes out, and he does his normal stuff, and says, like, like I have... Oh yeah, he says that he wants to enter the Royal Rumble to prove right. prove he belongs and blah blah blah. Yep. Um, and then Drew McIntyre comes out and says what everybody else has always said. Mm-hmm. It's like you're a, you're a has been, and I'm gonna prove that yep. you don't belong. Cena's like, how many times have I heard this before? You're not the first, buddy. It's true. Um, and then McIntyre's like, well, I'm gonna show you because no one's ever done that either. Nope. <laughs> so. At this point, is this when Leo Rush came up and said the show is canceled? Yeah. He comes out. He's like, the show is canceled until someone does something about Seth Rollins. So McIntyre is is already, like, towards the ring. Um, Rush and Lashley are at the the ramp. And then you just see um, Seth Rollins running from the back and attacks the two of them. Yep. They go to the ring. Dean comes out, so it's two on three Mm because Rush obviously doesn't count. It's um, fair. It's true. So that's when Finn comes out. Yeah, Finn mm-hmm. comes out, and then they go to commercial, oh, and then surprise, surprise, surprise six man <clears throat> tag. Um, obviously not an actual surprise. No. Um, the faces win. No real surprise there. No. Seth hits a curb stomp on Dean. Yep. Um, strangely. As they're celebrating, they have Triple H talking to Sasha and Bailey, right? Playing on the screen in the back, and Triple H is just not paying attention to what's going on on the ring. I guess that's the whole point. So Seth's like watching him, and he goes to the back wall, pissed off. He and then he goes up to Triple H, and I guess he's got a coffee in his hand, and <clears throat> smacks it out of his hand. And Triple H is like, "What?" do you think you're doing and that's when he what demands uh dean ambrose tonight yep he said he wants his rematch <gasps> tonight and triple h says okay fools count anywhere right so new era we're gonna get the same people wrestling multiple times on the show absolutely <laughs> why why would we change anything it's working it's I just mean, we want to make it look like we're changing i guess it's I mean, all the, about perception at least they it, it wasn't like we got to see baron corbin wrestle multiple times or something like that it's true that would be worse that would have been oh yeah worse. No, no no the match they had was good yeah um so um when we got the uh, hulk hogan right honoring mean gene uh-huh. uh surprisingly good yeah no he did fine yeah i know there was a lot of fans that were not in favor of him coming back to do this, but yeah, but it, it does was make tastefully sense. done, you know. Yeah, I don't see anything really coming of it. No, um, I, I feel like had he come for like just no reason at all, it probably would have been a lot more negatively. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, accepted. So. But since it was for a good reason, because at first you never assume that they're gonna do anything for a good reason. No. So, but yeah, it was it was good. It was quite a long video package, actually. Yeah, but it was really well done. Mm-hmm. And and it was just like you could really see how much wrestling has changed since well, that back too. then. That is also very true. But yeah, then Hogan says some more words. He references Randy Savage, Mister Perfect. 
Um, but yeah, he said he was uh, something about a match in heaven, right? Yeah. The- and then the Ultimate Warrior and who's the last one? Oh, jeez. Because I think there was four of them. Yeah, there was. It was Henning, Warrior, Savage, and oh, jeez. I can't even think of who it is. He also said Andre, but he said Andre yeah, was going to be the special guest referee. Something like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's... We'll if we remember, we'll, yeah. we'll come back to it. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we had Rude and Gable versus the Revival and yep. the Lumberjack match. Yep, this happened because last week the illegal man was pinned of the Revival, so yep. they decided they deserved a rematch. Of course. And this week, same result, pretty much. Yeah. Dawson had his foot on the rope. Referee wasn't in view of it. Counted three count anyway. Yep. So now you're saying I have to buy into a third? I mean, this match was very good. Oh, yeah, I it was enjoyed very good, it. Actually. They, yeah, they did a very good job. But the fact that you're going to make us buy into a third match? Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, you should just hold it off for a couple weeks and do it at the Rumble. Rather than well, have another match next week. There's also no guarantee that they're going to do another match next week. I don't it's think, true. I don't think they announced it or anything. No, but the way things, you know. Yeah, it does make like sense. Finn Balor they'll... versus Baron Corbin. Mm-hmm. Next it's week. true. Um, this week, Elias versus Baron Corbin. Yeah. Actually, uh, before we move on, my favorite thing about this, though, is the fact that the Revival is pleading to the Lumberjacks. Mm. That's like, oh, my foot was on the ropes, as if they can do anything yeah. about it. I think the Ascension were the only ones to agree with them. And I think uh, yeah. Slater and Lionel would know. Yeah. The uh, AOP wasn't out there, right? Why would they be out there? Part of the Raw Tag Division. So? Neither was... Uh, I know I joked about heavy machinery, but you said they were in catering. That's pretty funny. <laughs> um, no, because EC3 and Lacey Evans were on main event this week. Oh, no. I think it was actually a dark match. I don't think it was actually taped for main event. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. what I had read somebody had said. But Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, as you mentioned, we got Elias versus Baron Corbin. Um, Baron Corbin wins at the end of days. Yeah. Uh, it. it didn't really matter who went over here. No. <laughs> Good for Corbin? I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. At this point, it's more of Elias comes out to get the crowd going, and then his matches are inconsequential afterwards. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, Pretty much. Then we had kind of the down turn. This was part not of the show. good. So. This Run- was bad. Braun Strowman comes out and said he's not interested in talking. He wants to fight. Right. Um, they cut to backstage. You got Heyman and Lesnar just sitting mm-hmm. back there. I was like, oh, we're not coming to the ring. And then Braun talks a bunch. And then Brock's finally like, oh, I guess I'll go out to the ring. Then he comes out, walks around the ring, and then walks back up the ramp. So apparently Braun is not cleared to wrestle yet. Oh. Yes. But that's not good. I mean, I, I, this it's such a joke at this point with Brock. Y- you got to figure, how much money are they paying him per appearance? You're literally having him show up and leave. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have him beat up Heath Slater again or someone, you know? It would make sense. It would, you know, give him... It, it would prevent us from complaining about <laughs> this. Or, you know, it could have had... <laughs> Brock backstage with Heyman, you have somebody walk by and be like, no, I'm not going to come out there and fight you. I'm just going to beat the crap out of this guy. I guess. I don't know. It's it's being handled poorly, but... And this just... Braun just... It, it, I was waiting for him to say, line. <laughs> like, it just didn't seem like anything lined up. Yeah, and he was staring at the camera, which I guess they kind of wanted it to, to look like he was staring dead at him but it kind of didn't really work mm-hmm. um it was not good yeah it was not a very good segment no um up next we have junior mahal and alicia fox versus ember moon and apollo cruz um yeah I, another kind of wasted segment or whatever um ember moon hits the eclipse on alicia fox the only way this match was ever going to end right um and that was it wow yeah, no, it was compelling really, yeah and the best part is like this is like 
almost 75 percent of the show right now what yeah we just run through yeah yeah not a whole um, lot really went down and i mean i i know it's still early this was the first live show of the year you figured they were gonna kick it off and at least well, somewhat compelling that's why brock lesnar was there that they think that him his presence is good enough. Yeah, that's what the problem is. I mean, I was falling asleep during that segment. But did and I think I just ignored it when I watched the Hulu version. Did uh, he get any type of good reaction coming out? Braun? Yeah. No, no, no. no oh, Brock. Brock? No, yeah. I don't think really like, anyone cared. Braun obviously always yeah. gets a good reaction. Um, I don't think anyone really seemed to care too much about Brock coming out though. Plus, they always pan out like and just show his tron when mm. he comes oh, out anyway. right 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 so it's not like you can see what the crowd's doing anyway no you can hear him at least so well i'm just just saying if you are just like watching oh, you're you. not going to notice um all right well so. i guess it's not like the last two weeks when it was taped and they could just edit whatever audio they wanted to and it's true um all right so we had the first ever moment of bliss or the first ever show moment of bliss i i don't know where where it went wrong here as soon as they all got out as soon as where it went wrong it went wrong as soon as nia Jax came out i think even before that it was yeah i guess so well when bliss comes out she does her thing ronda what did she ask her who she wants to face or well did ronda bring it up on her own what Alexa asked what was next oh, for okay, right. Ronda. Mm-hmm. And Ronda was going on about wanting to improve as a champion and right. face the best opponent. Alexa goes, oh, I thought you were talking about me. And she's like, no. I was right. talking about Sasha. And then that's when Nia comes out. No, no, Sasha came out. No. I oh, no, no, you're Nia right. Came Nia out came first. out. You're right. Okay, so she you was, are correct then. That is when it went downhill. Yeah. She was running her mouth. Um complaining that oh i deserve another shot blah 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 and then sasha comes out seemingly unprovoked that was the weird well, part i thought i, I could have sworn sasha came out as soon as ronda said that nope. and then she was like oh, oh, i i don't know it just seemed like so awkward like yeah. she didn't know what to say to yeah, ronda no. and what came out just didn't sound yeah natural. so no naya came out complained first and then sasha came out okay said thank you to ronda and she accepts her challenge then Nia gets in Sasha fa- is Sasha's face mm-hmm. and says that I'm a 300 uh, ounce person yeah. <laughs> or some something like that. And then Sasha goes, I don't care how big you are. I've beaten you in the ring. Mm-hmm. I'll do it again. And then she did call her a bitch too. That is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I'm not a bitch. I'm the bitch. Yeah. Yeah. She says <laughs> something stupid like that. Um, and then we got Sasha versus Nia. The winner faces Ronda Rousey at the Royal Rumble. Um, so despite the fact that there was several points of time where Sasha actively tried to kill herself, um, like, I don't know what they were trying to do with that spot on the apron. Was Nia actually supposed to fall off? Was she supposed to make it look like a power bomb onto the, it, it was, it had to have been a hurricanrana attempt and no, it didn't make any sense because Nia didn't <clears throat> move at all. But I, I feel like what might've happened is that Sasha called the move. Oh. And Nia went. Oh, I can't do it. And yeah, because that wouldn't have. No, it would have. It would have not have been a good idea. But that's something that Sasha would have done, though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. normally that would have been fine. Right. Um. And then you had the spot where Nia, I guess, was attempting a Samoan drop from the second rope. Sure. Where she was holding up Sasha, and she like just dropped her, and Sasha like <laughs> nailed her head on the turnbuckle. So that was another not sure exactly what they were going for type thing. Yeah. Um, but besides those two very, very bad spots, um, I thought that the match was good because they did a good job incorporating Bailey and Tamina on the outside. Yeah. Um, you know, the interactions made sense and everything. So it was, uh, I thought, like I said, minus those two is a good story at the very least. Somebody almost died, but it was great. Well, she didn't actually almost die. <laughs> no, I know. But she, she, but she's had a reputation of putting herself in harm's way. Oh anyway. yeah, that's that's for so sure. So it's not necessarily that it's anyone's fault, really. It's just that's true. just the way that Sasha works. So dangerous um, to <laughs> herself. Much. Yeah, to herself. She she's a little too ambitious sometimes, <clears throat> especially considering she's working with 
Somebody who's got a reputation for hurting other people. Yeah. So it's uh it's like uh one of those wicked storms or whatever. All yep. right. So, okay. So yeah, but all right, let's talk about Sasha versus Ronda at the Rumble. Uh-huh. Um I mean, I'm sure Ronda's going to win. Yeah. But it's going to be her best match. Right, which is funny because almost every match she has She just keeps getting better. Yeah, yeah. So and this is the first time where it actually is because of the opponent, not because Ronda's getting better. Right. So it's uh it should be very good. I can only imagine unless for whatever reason Ronda can't keep up with Sasha, which I don't really see being We haven't the seen that being the case with anything. Granted, she has had weaker opponents. Yeah. Because Charlotte is more technical. Oh, yeah, yeah, she wrestled Charlotte. When we she's met. more technical, so she's not going to be jumping around like Sasha mm. will be. Um, Naya, obviously, and then she had Alexa. So it's, yeah. it's like her opponents haven't really been particular. Can't believe I forgot about the match against Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. I, I didn't think you did. did no, nope, completely yeah. forgot. Yeah, so. Again, um, not all there right now. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, most of the time not there, but yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that should be a good match. Yeah, um, I'm. It looks like we're gonna have some big women's matches at the Rumble. Which yeah, SmackDown will get to later on, and mm-hmm. then we have the women's Rumble again. And I mean, that almost looks a little obvious from the standpoint right now of who's gonna win. But well, I, I think I we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Basically, whoever isn't in the SmackDown Women's Championship match. He's is going to win. win. Yeah. So that just it just makes the most sense. It does. Um but yeah. Then we have uh the main event, uh-huh. Dean versus Seth, Falls Count Anywhere match. Uh-huh. Um this should have been their match at TLC. Oh, this it was, was about a hundred times better than that one. Well, it was because there was actually like some anger and Right. I mean, they didn't even need to escalate the feud anymore. Hmm. It could have just been I mean, you're just stretching it out at this point. Yeah. But, you know, they utilized the backstage. They utilized the crowd. You, it was pretty much everything you could ask for in a Falls Count Anywhere mm-hmm. match. So, um, Except for the interference. Yeah. So you get to the point towards the end of the match. It's like Seth looks like he's going to win, but like, why would he win the title or Was back? he setting up for the curb stomp at that point? He hit the curb stomp. Oh, did he hit yeah. it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, so he hits the curb stomp, and then he goes for the pin. Lashley drags him out of the ring. Beats the crap out of him on the outside, throws him back in the ring, um, hits him with a couple of moves, and then Dean pins him. Um, besides the fact that, obviously, Seth wasn't going to win the title anymore. Um, but this should be it, it for sh- Dean and Seth. It should be. I don't think it will be, but it should be. For the time being, you can at least pause it and pick it up at a later time. Yeah. Um, I still don't like the fact that it, Lashley... Because, you know, it could have, you could have done a lot more. Well, it's not, there's a lot better people. Because Lashley doesn't really need, I guess, this. It's not even, that's just the way he's been built up and booked. That yeah. why would you have him face the, basically the top guy on Raw now? Yeah. He's just not, I don't know. Because it, it, no matter how much they try, he's not really getting over yeah. So you're kind of just wasting potential on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have McIntyre come out, even if he's not doing anything. Well, I don't know. They're probably not going to do anything with him and Cena, right? That'll probably just be a uh, standoff in the Rumble, maybe, something like that. That would be my guess. Um, if, for whatever reason, McIntyre doesn't have a match at WrestleMania, it yeah. could be Cena. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but I don't really think anything will come of it. It's He's just another, I guess, example of the new guys that are trying to take on Cena. Yeah. New uh, era. Same old shit. Yep, yep, yep. Cue so, the siren. That was Raw. Um, yeah. SmackDown, on the oh, other hand. before we finish Raw, apparently, I think it was over the weekend at a house show, uh-huh. Seth faced Dean, and Dean took a curb stomp and laid in the ring for like 15 minutes. Even people are le- like leaving the uh, the arena. That's how he was selling the move. Like he was dead. <laughs> it was okay. ridiculous. That's interesting. But it was pretty funny. I liked it. Oh, it was well, different. yeah. Okay. Well, and that's like 
the kind of nice thing you can do, like in a house show. Yeah. So you're not restricted by anything. So it's true. That is pretty funny, though. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So, I guess SmackDown was I get I guess uh, politically incorrect this week. I mean, kind of. I guess. So the show opens with Daniel Bryan <sighs> in the concession stand, and he's like yelling at the audience and at this and like the crowd that's like standing around him, and explaining why people eat the concession stand food and. Because they're, like, empty on the inside and stuff like that. And then he was complaining about the merch stands not having any of so his Do you think stuff. they were actual concession stand workers that were in there, or do you think they were plants? What do you mean? It had to be. <laughs> they could have just closed that one off. No, and said, I think they they did it. They just did. did it Yeah, quick and yeah, everything. The, the, with the exception the of people the people there. that he actually interacted with, I, I'm pretty sure that it was probably just regular. Man, I was really hoping when... Daniel Bryan grabbed the hot dog from that guy. He went, hey, don't grab my meat or something like that. Should have been so good. Yeah, it could have been. He's a vegetarian. He should, I mean, a vegan. He should have held him, threw it right on the ground. Yeah, you'd think that. Something. He seemed a little too comfortable holding that <laughs> hot dog. That's for sure. Yeah. I miss this so much. Not Daniel Bryan. He lives for this stuff. Yeah. No, but I mean, it, he's all in on the character, though. It's so I, true. You know, I can't really complain. About, I like this segment. I... I I found it hilarious. It, no, it was funny. Again, you're directly insulting your court. target audience. Yeah. So it's kind of like, are you really like, what is the end game here? I guess they Vince want McMahon him to, next week coming out saying we're not here to insult our audience like he did back in like the late nineties when they were going into the attitude. Yeah. Era. So it's like, I, I don't know. To be fair. He did go up to a couple of heavy set people and not call them fat or something like that. So you know, I mean yeah. that's that's where you cross the line. Um, somebody, I think it was on Raw. They just called him what impotent, right? Oh, Daniel Bryan. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but someone on Raw, I think it was Jinder. He's he was like yelling at people or fake yelling at people in the audience, mm -hmm. and he goes, "You next to the fat guy." <laughs> He did say that, yes. Yeah, that was right. pretty funny. So, but whatever. It it wasn't a bad segment. It was great. It was just, just admit it. It just it was, it was strange the way that they went about it. I guess I don't know. It's just never a good idea to insult your fan base. Because he been was doing it the whole time they've been in business. I guess that's true. To anyway, some extent. He goes down the the stands. He yells at people in the in the crowd. Finally, gets to the ring. He goes walks over to kind of by the where the ramp is, and our truth comes out of nowhere and attacks him. Mm -hmm. um, this is what from ha what happened on the Christmas Day episode, right? Yeah, where he beat up Santa Claus. Where truthy truth, Claus. Truthy Claus. <laughs> then they have a match, which I guess was already scheduled. Yeah. Um, Dan Bryan obviously wins. Hits him with the running knee. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after the match, AJ attacks Daniel Bryan. He was, what, going up the ramp at this point? Yeah. AJ grabs a chair. I think Daniel Bryan runs away. Yep. Um, and that leads directly into the next match, yeah. which was... So, before we get any further. So earlier before SmackDown, they had the AEW uh, announcement, whatever, um, uh, committee thing that was going on at the... Jaguars Stadium. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, and it's, it was know. short or not that far away from the venue. Yeah, and apparently, I guess security guards were not letting people in with AEW shirts on. Which, yeah, it was it was ridiculous. And then yeah. people said WWE was banning them and stuff like that. It just turned into a whole thing. But apparently, WWE wasn't behind it. But uh, well, obviously not. Yeah, behind, yeah, yeah. But, but it, it was uh, it was a big thing. Uh, People yeah. getting worked as usual, getting all angry. Yeah, but um, you know, I mean, if if AEW becomes a thing, it's gonna gonna make things a whole lot more interesting. That's for sure. It's true. It it could very quickly prove how outdated WWE's processes are. That's yeah, that's for sure. Um, and but, you would think they would have everything in place to all of a sudden flip the light switch. You'd think that. But the talent is 100% there. It's true. It's it never been their problem. Yeah, it's just they have no direction. 
or anything. No, no drive to put on good, I guess, storylines and stuff. Yeah. But it's just more of them insult- insulting their fans. It's true. It's true. Yeah. All right. But so, anyway, we can go back. Yeah. We got uh, Rey Mysterio and Mustafa Ali versus Samoa Joe and Andrade Cien Almas. Yep. Um, we saw a pile driver. Well, it was a Canadian destroyer, but yeah. we saw a pile driver. It was a Canadian destroyer. I I was listening. Corey Graves Not. told me it was a pile driver. It's a pile driver. Corey Graves is a liar. Corey Graves is an idiot. There's a difference. Because it just it's funny. Because it's like the, the man, one band move. The man doesn't think before he speaks. He just throws that stuff. It's like Booker T, but he's more um he's better at expressing himself. Mm. So the thought process is just is equally not there. But he just because Well, you're probably like Booker T probably took so many shots to the head with a chair. It's so true. Corey uh, Gra- well, Corey Graves did retire because of head head drama, issues. Yeah. So But it's just funny because he just like because the best is when he finds himself caught in nonsense because he backpedals like very mm-hmm. quickly. And then when he gets called out on it by like Byron, he gets all defensive. To be fair, do you want to be would you no. want to be called out on something by Byron? No, but it's great because like he'll he'll like ram something down like Phillips' throat mm-hmm. if if he catches any little Oh thing. yeah, yeah. He doesn't but let it, go, yeah. Yeah. So still It's funny. Not the best Canadian destroyer from the weekend. For okay. the, the week. Okay. The, they had a really nice spot in uh, Impact's homecoming where Pentagon Jr. jumped off of uh, one of LAX's. He was on the ground, jumped off his back midair, and hit the other member of LAX with a Canadian Destroyer. It was a really cool spot. But this was still really cool and very... Unexpected? Yes. Anyway, it was uh, Rey Mysterio hitting it on Almas, to be clear. I don't think we said that part. No. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool spots. It's Mysterio. He can do what he wants. It's true. Just like Randy Orton. Yeah, more or less. Um, he wasn't on the show, was he? Uh, I don't think so. But it was um, cool spots pretty much any time. Mysterio, Ali, Almas. They're all good. Yeah. Joe was kind of there. This was a very good match. Yeah, it was. It all was very, over the place. Yeah, there was a lot of going on and everything. Um, and surprisingly, uh, uh, Almas pinned Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Yeah, with the hammerlock DDT after yep. it pretty much seemed like for sure. Well, yeah, because he was set up. Ray was going for the six one nine, and uh, then Almas caught him. Yep, dropped him, and then put him in the hammerlock yeah, DDT. This, that was it. This was after Ali had jumped over Almas and pretty much sat on Joe's face because he like overshot the his uh, overshot his uh, jump. Yep. So. But yeah, no good match. Mm-hmm. We we had some really good matches on the show. Yeah. Actually, all four matches were pretty good. Mm -hmm. Even the Daniel Bryan versus R-Truth was good. Well, it's funny because R-Truth seemed like he was being competitive as Mm -hmm. opposed to jokey. Right. Well, he usually just runs through the motions. Yeah. Which, that's one of my biggest gripes with a lot of WWE matches. It always just seems like everybody's basically just getting their shit in and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's the same moves over and over. And then when we see matches like the Bar and the Usos or, you know this tag match we just talked about mm-hmm. it it changes things up a little it's bit. true that's why nxt has been such a fresh yeah because you there's so rarely just repeat stuff right because they have such a little small amount of time mm-hmm. that even if people are on the show multiple times yeah. chances are they're not facing the same it's like person. they're given a script to work the match and it's just bullet points that mm-hmm. they have to do yeah it's fair mm-hmm. um let's see we got the miz pleading to shane for him to use his power to get them a tag team title shot. To be fair, it's not like Shane's never done anything like this. You mean when SmackDown was terrible last year because it was focused around Shane McMahon? Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, Shane thinks that they're not ready for right around this time it started. Yeah. So No, it was probably no, it was like, earlier. Yeah, it yeah, was No, earlier. it was probably like SummerSlam last year. Oh, yeah, it was. Because he was the referee between AJ Styles and him for the oh, U.S. title. Owens, and then they had that Hell in a Cell match. Yep. Oh, shit, you're right. Yep. Anyway, Shane doesn't think they're ready, so he kind of brushes off the maze. Um, Rusev comes out, and he says that Shinsuke, is, it's his fault that Lon is hurt. And then Shinsuke is apparently hanging out in the TV truck trying to prove his innocence. Mm-hmm. Um, and but they show a bunch of angles where he didn't actually land on Lana, right? Yeah, when it, when it was very clear that he didn't land on Lana yeah. anyway. Um, so apparently Lana is just 
out with some kind of uh, cert for some su- sort of surgery. I guess nagging injuries, maybe. Oh, or, I don't know. Well, I think they that picture was probably recent, the one from the hospital. I don't know. I figured it was all just them working us. I guess, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, um, it seemed like they are trying to uh, write off Lana for a little while. That's fine. Um, yeah, it shouldn't really add anything. She no. hasn't been wrestling, so... Um, if she was used as the mouthpiece for Rusev, it would have made sense. But I don't know if she's good at. He just doesn't need it. Well, it's true, but I think it's better for his heel character. When yeah. He's heel, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I, I think as a likable face, Rusev is probably more endearing if he speaks for himself. Yeah. These people are like, what the hell is he saying? Yeah, because oh, okay. you, you don't understand him, so you obviously have to like him, which is not usually the way they go. It no. just works for him. Yep. Um, but yeah, Rusev runs to the back. Because Shinsuke kind of tells him that it's his fault. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shinsuke attacks him, and then they fight backstage. And I think Shin ends up on top. And that was it. Yeah. They were pushing around one of those luggage cases. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess we're going to get this match at the Rumble, probably. Mm-hmm. I would imagine so. so. Pretty show. Yeah, which is fine. Because then you're just going to get Rusev getting another win. Who do you think Dean? You think Dean's going to have a match? Absolutely. Who do you think he's going to face? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. It could be Seth. Megan all Shut up. No, I'm not kidding. It's very possible. I didn't mean it like, shut up, that's stupid. I oh. just meant shut up, that's yeah, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. It could be him. It could be Apollo. Um, I don't know why they didn't do something with him and Finn or something like that. That would make sense, but that seems like something that they could hold off until... Oh, yeah, yeah, because Royal Rumble's, what, two weeks from this Sunday coming yeah. up? I think Dean versus Finn would be a good match at WrestleMania. Hopefully not on the pre-show. Well, uh, it wouldn't be on the pre-show. No, well, remember Ambrose and Corbin were, right? Wasn't it Corbin? Okay. Dean Ambrose on SmackDown after his WWE title yeah, reign, I know. where his stock was so low I know. that they needed to put him on Raw just to get him motivated again against... Baron Corbin. And we used to the, and he won for the, the United the States Championship. Was it the US? What title? part of that doesn't seem like it's not a pre-show match? It's like your entire mid card. So, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, Dean Ambrose versus Finn Balor for the IC title guaranteed would not be on the pre-show. Probably not. Um, Shinsuke versus Rusev, more likely. Um, but there's also a chance that they could have like a triple threat again for the IC title. It went over Something. well last year. Um, it could go. What did I say? What you said? WrestleMania. What did I say? No, I said you're so mean. Oh, oh, yelling. Okay. okay, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, it went. It went over well last year. WrestleMania. It could go over well this was year. Was it on Fatal Four Way? Was it triple threat? I think it was triple threat at Mania. It what was, was rude. Was it? Oh, U.S. title was triple. Uh, oh, I thought you said U.S. title. No, I oh, was you're talking, talking about IC. Title. I gotcha. That was triple threat. Fatal yes. Four Way was the U.S. title. Yeah, the IC was what? Uh, was it Seth? It, it was Seth Finn, Finn and Miz. Miz. Yeah. So right, because then they added Joe at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yes, in the that, that's match. what I thought you were thinking. Mm-mm. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, up next, we have... Um, <clears throat> Bar I, versus Usos, right? I guess the most disappointing thing they could have done. Well, for the ending, you mean? No, I'm just talking about the fact that, you know... It happened again. It's, it's the, the Bar story. and the Usos when the, we have the club. Yeah, but, I, I mean, I, no, I, I'm completely on the same page as you, and you're making all the right points. But at least if they're going to put... A team, a match together it's, that we've seen before. At least it's good. Yeah, it's true. It's not Baron Corbin versus Elias or the revival like. versus Rudy L- Gable. No, that, that was a good match, but it just they, they're repeating the same thing over and over again. So, it's not it's, like the revival in the Luchas party. That that yeah that I guess that's a more fair assessment. Yeah. Um. So, if the Usos win, they get to face the Bar at the Royal Rumble for the tag team ch- uh, championship. I still hate that. Yeah, it's They should good. get rid of that, too, with the stupid uh, rematch. About, yeah, I agree. Um, so the we Usos obviously... face you yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> the Usos obviously don't win. Um, so, and I don't understand this at all. So Mandy Rose comes out, 
and she's wearing nothing but a towel, supposedly. And she said that she forgot her, I think, tiny gold top and tiny yeah. gold pants. Yeah, or shorts. strong shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In his hotel room. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he turns around. He gets knocked off the apron. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Jay gets kicked with the bro kick. And that was it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after the match, The Miz comes out. And uh, he goes, "We're ch- me and Shane are challenging you at the Royal Rumble. Gets kicked in the face by Sheamus. <laughs> and then he's like, we accept. <clears throat> um." Which yep. obviously kind of figured that was going to happen anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. We got Naomi attacking Sonya and Mandy backstage mm-hmm. and holding her on. Still don't get what they're going for. Everyone's pretty much barefoot at this point. Well, I think it was. I Except think, Sonya. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah, because uh, Naomi took her shoes off. Right. That's right. I forgot about <clears throat> that. You know what ran through my head? All right. So when this all happened, it ended with. Uh, what did Jimmy come running up and Sonya kicked uh, Naomi in the stomach and she went down and was holding her stomach and I was like, oh God, please don't be a pregnancy storyline. You know, just such the the bad yeah, things that true. WWE yeah. has done. Just the way she, you know. Yeah, I guess. And, and everything that's been going on between Jimmy and Naomi's storyline. Yeah. I was just like, oh dear Lord. Yeah, it's pretty dumb. Um, Daniel Bryan claims he'll be champ forever because he has the right motivation. Um, I didn't really quite get what he was going for than this one. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, we got the Miz backstage finally gets Shane on board. Sh- Shane finally agrees that they can do it. So, do they win the titles, go on a little run, drop the belts, and then end up having a match at Mania? Or do they just lose flat out at Rumble and we get a build to Mania? Uh, the first one. Yeah, I like that idea. If, if it's going to happen, it's got to happen right. If Braun could be tag team champions with a little kid. Anything's Braun. Anything's Braun. And they beat, he beat the bar last <laughs> year, too. So they're always the punching bags, I guess. <clears throat> All right. Heading on to our main event. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Carmella. Winner goes on to face Asuka for the uh, women's, t- uh, women's title at the Royal Rumble. There was actually multiple points in time during this match where and I thought Carmella could I win. thought there was, yeah. And then this, but I guess it really, you didn't really need to have a big match at the Royal Rumble. Everything's going to be outshined by the it's Rumble true. matches. Yeah. Um, you almost forget <clears throat> that not too long ago, Carmella was a joke. Oh, yeah. She has improved so much. She actually felt like she well, I mean, in that match. I'm, Granted, I'm, she wasn't. At the same level, but it's not it's not laughable that she's in. Oh there. no no no! You can especially when working with Charlotte and Becky, and it's just a triple threat. So yeah. anything can happen. Mm-hmm. But no, all of the transition into moves like her, uh, what the hell is that thing called? Uh, the uh, code of code silence. silence. Yes yes yes. That flawless tra- you know, yeah. transitions into uh-huh. it a couple times. Uh-huh. And you know you gotta give credit for Charlotte and Becky doing their job, selling for her and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It just it, they did a good job. They Carmella is one of the most underrated, I guess. That's people. fair. Well, she gets she's very over the top character wise, and when you're praised for your character work, generally speaking, you're not gonna get noticed as much for your in ring talent. But I mean, honestly, I mean, in ring talent can be taught character. You know, I mean, it's, it's true. Yeah, she she and that's exactly why she went from a valet mm-hmm. to a, a full time roster member. Yep. Because I think they knew that she was going to be fine. Like same thing with Bliss. Yeah, carrying herself, and that she'll learn. Right. And clearly, she's been learning from whoever. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, like SummerSlam, we were just it was like a kind of a joke almost. Uh-huh. Well, because of the way, not necessarily how she performed, right? But how she was booked, right? So, like, going into SummerSlam, we knew she was dropping the title. Oh, yeah, yeah. Going into this, there was a chance she was actually going to yeah. go on to win. Which would have given Asuka her victory over Carmella because, what, she beat her twice, right? Yeah, and I, I, I would have preferred Becky and Charlotte being in the Rumble as well. Right, right. That's that part of the reason why I thought Carmella might have won. Yeah, because then it was like, all right, well, there's a possibility somebody else could win. Yeah, because, as, as we said earlier, uh, it, it, 
Charlotte has to win the Rumble now, right? I mean, it makes sense. So what's going to happen is Becky will probably... I don't... It's, uh, that's the thing. I don't know. Unless Becky doesn't win, she goes in the Rumble. Yeah, I guess that's, that would make sense. That's definitely her character. Yeah. Right or now. for some reason... No, that's, that wouldn't work. I was going to say maybe Becky faces Carmella for her 30 slot. Mm. But, like, why would Becky go after it if she's going after the yeah. title? That kind but of that thing. would be the perfect person to take out if she was going to go in. Yeah, she could actually just attack her and then take the spot. That would make sense. I'd be okay yeah. with that. And then... I could see it happening in both Rumbles with both R-Truth and Carmella. Yeah, I, I feel like R-Truth they'll is... they'll be on their vacation. I'm like, oh, shit, the Royal Rumbles today. That'd be funny. <laughs> I'd, I'd like that. No, they, I think they actually post on Instagram that they were at uh, Stanford already. <laughs> so, so dumb. dumb. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Um, so Becky ends up winning. Yes. Making Car- Tar- Carmella tap to the disarmor after a few transitions where it really looked like anybody could. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte hit Nashville selection from the top rope on Becky. Yep, that looked good. Um, and then there was a bunch of super kicks where it looked like Charlotte was getting knocked out of the ring and everything. So Yeah, well, it looked like Carmella was going to put Becky away, but then Becky reversed it and yeah. the disarmor. Well, the, to be fair, Becky went from out to, like, up again, yeah. but it, it, that's yeah, nitpicking. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, uh, Becky wins. She's celebrating. Oscar comes out, holds the title on her face. Do a standoff. They're going to the Rumble yep. for the title match. Um, another women's main event on SmackDown. I mean, it, I'd be it was fine the, with it, but it's the Royal. Oh, oh, no, you're talking, I'm talking about, about on SmackDown. SmackDown. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So I know I didn't. It wasn't gonna main event. <clears throat> no, 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 not with Ronda and uh, Sasha being the True. other women's match. That um, has more but possibility. Th- we're finally getting to that point where they're not making a big deal about it yeah, anymore. It's just, it's just I, like we. I knew off the bat that that was gonna be the main yeah, event. Yeah, this show. was the most important match that's right. happening on this show. It should be your main event. It should be in the main event. Yeah, that's it. Simple. Yeah, not- and and they booked it well. Because Not from Ronda the, and Natalia versus Tamina and Naya. Yeah, which did main event to Raw, and that, that was a week? waste of... That was two weeks two ago. Two weeks ago? That was a waste of... No, it was last week, because it was the New Year's Eve. Yeah. That was a waste of time. Yeah, because Christmas Eve was Ronda yeah. versus Natalia. Yeah, because so that was... That was shoehorned in. This one <clears throat> feels important. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. So. And there was stipulations, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, SmackDown just a, has yeah. it better. Yeah, but... They should be the better show. They're getting the, they're the ones getting the TV, big TV deal. With. I guess I don't know. But the thing is, it's not even like it's already going on. It's yeah, it's it's, it's fair. in the future. Yeah, but you got to build to something. You're not going to just all of a sudden flip that light switch. I know, but they've been better. Oh yeah, so oh, oh. that's fair. Yeah, so but whatever. Yep, it is what fair it enough. is. SmackDown good. Raw was okay. Um, it okay. It felt. It's a two-hour show that they stretch to three hours. Yeah, it's that's true. it. There's a lot. There's a lot that shouldn't happen on Raw. Well, no, they didn't make any of the changes that people were complaining about. Baron Corbin's still on TV. Well, he's gonna be on TV. I know because he's he's good heel. But again, it's all about meaningless matches. There is no reason for that match. There's no nope. reason for that mixed tag match. Nope. Braun and Brock he didn't need it was probably oh, just Brock was penciled in for the date and they were like oh crap yeah we gotta do something and yep. Braun can't actually mm-hmm. fight him so bad yep I mean they could've went somewhere with McIntyre and Cena yeah they just yeah, had that know. six man tag right that's it Finn same thing but it's true but whatever whatever that's what it is yep it'll be the same thing next week probably more or less yep all right, so we're through here. Yeah. So that was uh, episode 26 of our podcast. And if you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.